If someone has lost enough of their eyesight that they have trouble accomplishing everyday tasks, they have what is called low vision. With low vision, someone may find it difficult or impossible to read, drive, shop, watch TV, or recognize faces. Having low vision is a complex problem, but fortunately, there are ways to help people accomplish their daily activities and regain independence. To better understand low vision, we need to know what the different aspects of our vision are that enable us to see the world clearly. Central vision is the vision we use when we look directly at something. It gives us the greatest detail for reading print or recognizing faces. Peripheral vision is the vision we use to see everything around the edges. We're referring to our peripheral vision when we say we saw something out of the corner of our eye. While not detailed like central vision, peripheral vision is important for getting around. Contrast sensitivity is the ability to distinguish between objects of similar tones or color intensity, such as milk in a white cup, faint print on a restaurant menu, or facial features. Depth perception is the ability to judge the position of objects in space, such as foreground and background objects. Visual processing is often compared to a camera. Our eyes have a lens that focuses light onto the retina, the light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye. An optic nerve carries the images to our brain. Our brain processes the images into what we experience as vision. There are many causes of low vision, and different causes affect different aspects of our sight. For example, macular degeneration affects central vision. Diabetic retinopathy can affect central or peripheral vision. Glaucoma affects peripheral vision first. Strokes can affect one side of peripheral vision. All eye problems can decrease contrast sensitivity, and vision loss in one eye can affect depth perception. Conditions such as macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy can occur at any age, but are more common in older people. It's important to note that normal aging of the eye does not lead to low vision. What can be done to help people with low vision? First, regular medical exams with an ophthalmologist are important to diagnose conditions that can be treated and to start the vision rehabilitation process. Vision rehabilitation helps people learn new strategies using techniques and devices to complete daily activities so they can regain confidence and independence. In some conditions, such as macular degeneration, a blind spot known as a scotoma obscures part of the central vision. In these cases, a person may be trained to use off-center vision to see print or objects more clearly. If I move my head one way or the other, just slightly, that I still can't see your face, but your arms and your shirt and how you're seated, that's clear enough to me. There are many devices and techniques to help people with low vision. For example, optical aids, making things brighter, making things bigger, organizing and minimizing clutter, labeling things like thermostat dials and medications with a bold marker, using sounds such as talking watches, clocks, calculators, and computers. Books on tape can also help people with low vision lead a fuller life. For transportation, there are many options, including hiring a driver, sharing a car, arranging for a taxi, using senior and public transit systems, and walking when possible. It's important that people with low vision don't isolate themselves. The key to independence is making use of the many options available for staying connected, staying active, and making use of the vision they do have.